What's up folks? So back again for an update. This is week 11. Uh, usually do an update on a Tuesday, um, around sort of 12, 1 o'clock. Um, but this is Friday evening, so well, the reason I'm doing an update um, towards the evening, this is what, 4.30 in the afternoon actually, um, towards the end of the day, is because I just wanted to uh, illustrate this um, cloudy water problem that I was speaking about, which what I thought it was, I don't think it is. Um, but yeah, so this is the tank at 4.30. The light's a bit brighter than it usually is. Um, what we got? Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, 87% colour, 94% brightness. Um, so yeah, the cloudiness, it's not too bad, but if you look through this view, towards the top, you can see this sort of white hazing, which I thought was a bacterial bloom. It's so hard to diagnose exactly what it is because it could be uh, lots of things. Um, and I, th I don't think um, it, it is a bacterial bloom. The more I think about it, um, the more I, I see it and stuff. I, I basically put in place, like I said in my last update, um, a, a few things to, to start correcting it. Um, and it hasn't really made much difference doing that. Um, and usually a bacterial blooms usually disappear quite quick. Um, so yeah, the, if you look back through my channel, there's a video on there, uh, which I haven't mentioned about actually in my updates, about the um, atrocious snails that I've got in here. Um, they've started to do um, spawn and releasing this white, well, I call it smoke, they look like they're smoking, a bellowing smoke coming off them, which is um, obviously this the spawning event with them. And um, I think I, I came down, is it yesterday morning, at about 10 a.m. when the blue light, moonlight's come on to the start of the day, the lighting cycle. Um, one of the turbulence sensors is just constantly bellowing white, cloudy liquid coming out of it. It's really clouding the water up, and I th I'm thinking maybe that could be either this source of the problem or a contributing factor to it at least. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing I think it is as well is that I'm still, because it's such a young reef, it will be 11 weeks in, I'm still messing around with my parameters for my dosing. And, and, and as you probably know, I'm running everything really high, high alkalinity, that's sort of, sort of like 12, 12 12.6. Um, high calcium between 450 and 500. Um, high magnesium, 1400 to 1500. Um, maybe not quite as high as 1500, but 1420 or so. But anyway, oh, I think what it might be is because it's only cloudy towards the end of the day. In the morning it's crystal clear, apart from the snails making that cloudy this uh, the other morning. Well, what I think it is, is that, because I'm running everything so high, towards the end of the day when the lights have been on for a while, I'm getting uh, precipitation. Well basically the calcium and alkalinity you can't stay in solution where the pH rises right up. Um, so early in the morning it's sort of 8, 8.1 with no lights, I've tested for that. And then towards the end of the day it's 8.2, 8.3. So when the pH comes up, um, it has an effect on the, um, the alkalinity and the calcium and we start getting precipitation, i.e. cloudy water. I think that's what it is. So what I'm doing at the moment, I've backed off with the, uh, the dosing a little bit just to see uh, would it make uh, any difference? And I think it is. It's like usually this sort of time of day, it's usually a lot more cloudy than that um, because I've dropped the alkalinity down. Uh, it's about 10.9 now, and I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot for about nine to ten, and then um, with it with the um, calcium, I've dropped that. Um, it was at 460, 450, 460. I'm gonna drop that to 420, um, and the magnesium will drop down from 1400. It was yesterday down to 1350 um, and see if that will make uh, any difference. I think it will because it's starting to, um, since I've made them changes, starting to, to um, clear up a little bit. So, since the last video, 
uh, update we've um, hopefully you can see we we've got a lot more coralline algae on the back the spots that were there are really expanding so this video doesn't show them up properly but this top uh, plinth of plastic in the overflow um, really expanding up just pan around so you can see the difference I've got a video log of the uh, difference as well this side look at it yeah another month that would be completely covered pink and purple I reckon um, you can see the cloudiness in the water there which is annoying because if that's clear God, it, the water would be the tank looks so much better but, you know it will clear um, I'm on it and uh, trying to sort it so but I mean overall it looks really clear crystal clear the water it's just uh, me being over fussy I think um, but I want to get it perfect and I, and I will get it perfect so uh, all livestock and corals doing brilliant growth is great purple stylophora really doing well focus in here we go really growing nice just looking back the other day on videos um, I done <laughs> when it was tiny but since it's been in this tank it's really doing well it's loving the light loving the flow the water parameters how are you Benny big character he is constantly eating look at the size of his belly fat belly I, you know it's amazing because initially I thought oh, I'd be a bit worried because it's not much low nutrient system with low al algae in here um, of course an al being an algae blending that's what they feed on mostly and uh, I thought he would uh, diminish away sort of thing because he's not feeding right because he eats anything algae he's constantly picking off the rock the sand he eats any flake mice shrimp brine shrimp everything um, so it's definitely not an issue there and he's definitely growing an orange spot goby doing fine. All the chromises, all fine. They're like a pack of squabbling teenagers, that lot. Especially towards the when the moonlight goes on the, towards midnight. And uh, yeah, just before the lights go off, they're all squabbling for spaces to, to sleep and stuff, but not not really aggressively, you know. Um, they do do squabble. But most of the time they're all really really uh, peaceful clowns are doing fine totally fine I've moved this pole scroll to this corner so hopefully because they're always in this corner these clownfish I hope they would host it they're getting really close to it and sort of do flick around the tops of it so I reckon within a couple of weeks they'll, uh, they'll be in there hosting that which would be nice the only trouble I've got as like I said before is keeping on its own dedicated rock away from the main display is that down here it can start spreading onto this main bit of rock maybe at the glass so now I can cut it away from the glass but I've got to keep it away from this main display because it can spread by wildfire this pulse coral but yeah they seem to really like this corner so see how we get on with that pink hysterix loads of growth now what I done, what happened with this on Monday I was doing my maintenance sort of cleaning around here and everyone blowing the rocks off and I, I knocked it by accident and I knocked one of the branches off just on this tip here and uh, it was just hanging tiny little branch the end of it broke off uh, so I was like oh god that's annoying but I thought well let's experiment first bit of fragging I've done on this system where well, any of these corals actually I thought let's put a bit of the reef putty into a frag plug and plant it in so that's what I've done is try and focus literally this is tiny tiny tip it was just walking into two actually uh, so I've planted it in the putty and literally within four days about four days ago so now we'll be frying now yeah four or five days it it's definitely starting to grow which is fantastic so we'll have a new pink hysterix um, growing there so that's good. <clears throat> um, right, I did purchase, I said before, I was trying to have a break from buying any. I've not added any corals or livestock. I, need, I, I want to beef up the uh, cleanup crew a little bit. Um, get some turbo snails in there, uh, two or three of those. 
just to make sure that uh, not any algae build up. It's pretty good. I mean, my phosphates and nitrates are at zero. Um, but you do get the bits, um, you know, in the sort of lower flow areas where it just sort of starts to take the opportunity to grab any nutrients that's kicking around at a time and start little bits of hair. But I think we'll be all right. You can just beef up the clean up crew a little bit. Um, yeah, no more coral stock. It's just trying to save some money. But what I did add, um, I wasn't happy with the flow that was in the tank. This is going to be predominantly all SPS corals at the top. Um, so we're going to need loads of flow and the, the flow I got from that MP10 and the little j uh, wave machine off the Nano uh, I had nice good flow but I think it's enough so I went ahead and um, as I said before I'm going to add another wave machine when I've done that I've gone for another uh, j uh, wave machine but this time I've gone for the RW8 so this is twice the amount of power as the uh, one from the Nano, that's an RW4, 4,000 litres an hour. That's continuous flow, obviously. Uh, and this is the RW8, 8,000 litres an hour. Uh, and man, God, that thing is so powerful, it's unreal. Um, it can really move some more. I highly recommend it. I think I paid 80 pounds for it, or 79.99 on Charterhouse Aquatics. Uh, awesome. That on full power, on continuous flow, really moves literally anything kicking around in between them rocks, it's blown out. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's it. I think <laughs> brilliant wave machines they are. For what the price of them, two controllers now, the RW4 next to it, and this was the eight. I love the controllability of them, the price, they're reliable. Um, I love the way you can angle the head of them inside the tank, wherever. Um, that's the only downside to these MP40s. Oh, sorry, MP10s. Is that well, the one major thing is the cost. They're two hundred and ten pounds, two hundred and twenty. Actually, yeah, two hundred and twenty. They are. Um, the controllability, I don't think, is, is as good. Um, the, obviously, the the, um, the controller looks looks nicer. Um, you've got the the actual um, motor on the outside, as I've said before, and the wet side is just the propeller. But that you can't angle it at all once it's stuck on there. Uh, and um, the other thing as well, sometimes, is when you put it into feed mode and when it kicks back on, it jerks and 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 sort of flaps about and stuff. And sometimes this side can drop off. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 did, I have it got it adjusted perfectly, and I keep adjusting it. It doesn't make any difference, uh, so I don't do that anymore. I keep it. Um, I don't push feed mode. I just re reduce the uh, the flow right down to its minimum, yeah. and then put it back up again after. But there's no way I definitely I definitely won't buy another one of those uh, Vortec MP tens again. Too much money, and nowhere near as good as the J base. Um, so the RW4 I had of the Nano is what I must be must have had it like eight months nine months or so now reliable and and, and brilliant uh, you know if if it does stop working in a year two years time just replace it they're not that expensive and um, we can live with that so yeah that's the way machine now what I've got now is much more flow um, I'm still playing about with the flow um, but I've got the, the RW8 and uh, the 4 uh, wirelessly linked together uh, once the, um, the 8 is the, um, the master and the RW4 is the slave so whatever I adjust on this one this one changes um, so I've just got them on sort of maximum pulse and hence the uh, wave effect at the top of the tank and I've got the MP10 on a continual flow um, going through the middle so it sort of mixes up and you've got, got a sort of nice movement on, on all the polyps which is what I want constant movement on the polyps on the SPS continue sort of shaking of them which is what they need um, yeah, and obviously well, I've got the option of putting them all on full throttle to move when you just try this or uneaten food and stuff out of the rock work sort of cut of times a day. 
I got up earlier in the morning and uh, later on at night. So that's good. Um, right, then the sump. I retuned the skimmer a little bit just to produce uh, a little bit of a drier foam. Just experimenting with that um, really now. Um, it's just nice and this is clear. This is two days worth of skim. So, yeah, that seems to be okay. Just still fine tuning it really. I was initially doing like a wet skim, so I'm just experiment with doing a bit of a drier skim now. Um, I've backed off, I don't know if I mentioned in my last update actually, I've backed off the uh, return pump to about two, two and a half thousand litres an hour. So there's more contact time in the reaction chamber down here. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else there is. Everything's going really well. I would say we're only 11 weeks in and um, Coraline is going Growth is really good, so that's a good sign. All the livestock, ah, that's another thing. Cleaner shrimp. This cleaner shrimp is my original one out of the Nano. Nosy clams, always get in the way of camera. And if you see underneath, there's definitely eggs underneath there. Um, because I introduced the little one to this tank. And I come down the other morning, I just couldn't find the little one. It has disappeared completely disappeared so what I'm thinking's happened is 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 um, I've had a bad molt um, which tried to sh shed its skin it's had a sometimes they can have a bad molt and they can't quite get out of their skin properly and I think if they if they stay in stands if they're in one spot for too long at night I've got quite a large emerald cap crab in here I think he might be responsible for um, maybe killing it or whatever I don't I don't know um, so that's a shame, the little uh, cleaner shrimp has, has died and it's obviously not nothing to do with the water quality or anything like that, it's just a, it's just part and parcel of Keaton reef, reef tanks, you, you do lose the occasional bit of livestock here and there, I mean we've been really lucky and uh, you can see underneath, typical isn't it when you try and zoom in on the eggs it goes underneath, um, yeah you, you're going to lose some livestock but uh, I don't think I'm going to replace it, maybe later on I'm going to concentrate on obviously building the coral stock up first. Um, I can't zoom in on them eggs. But yeah, so I've lost that that little cleaner shrimp. Um, bit annoying, but there you go. Other than that, everything's going really, really well. Um, apart from the, hay, the, the, the cloudy white haze of the water at the top. Uh, I, I, I reckon I'll correct that in the next couple of weeks. When that next update, I think we should be... Um, Right, well, once we get the uh, dosing parameters and the bat all balanced properly, um, that should be okay. But um, I just, any, uh, the other thing as well, anyone that's interested in what parameters I'm running this tank at, I've no longer keeping a log on pen and basic, I explained in my last video, pen and paper, a log of everything. Um, obviously, I highly recommend do that, but if you go online, this is a really good website, and obviously, they do an app for it on um, Android and Apple as well. It's called Aquatic Log. And it's a, br it's a brilliant site. You basically create a profile for the tank you're doing and you can log everything, every single parameter and um, what you're dosing, maintenance, etc. It's really easy, simple to use. And anybody else, friends and stuff can go on and see how your tank's going and you can follow other people, other reefers and stuff and see what um, parameters they're running their tanks at. That's great, really, really good. So, if you, anyone's interested in what I'm running their tank at, if you go onto Aquatic Log um, and put in the search banner at the top, Nath's Reef, um, you'll be able to see this tank um, when I'm testing, what I'm testing for, and what the readings are. Um, so, that's really good. I discovered that. And uh, yeah, what I'm going to do now is just let the system run, um, try and build up some money because I've spent so much money, obviously, in setting this all up. Um, luckily, I've you know, uh, got for credit cards, you can, you know, that's what I've um, used to sort of finance doing this. But because it's just so expensive, and now I've, I've got it, every piece of equipment to run everything on. I'm, uh, yeah, the next stage 
he's going to be thinking about just packing it out for, for corals but um, oh, I'm done now with, with uh, the installing all the equipment because I've got everything on here I need now um, yeah hopefully there's nothing else I need to buy um, because it's just money is unbelievable it, yeah, don't ever underestimate the cost of doing this hobby um, it's really I don't care what anybody says so it doesn't have to be expensive if you want to do it properly uh, and have a system or a display of livestock where people are going to go wow that's amazing I think it's right really it. you've got to spend the money on the equipment you can't do it with cheap equipment it's just not going to work never budget out you know never cheap out on anything um, just buy the best you can get for what you can afford um, and just spec it right because <clears throat> as expensive it is it, you know, it is so rewarding though it, you know, especially when things are going right and that's all down to you your maintenance routine your parameters you're keeping it, I mean, at your selection of equipment and your selection of livestock um, it's so so rewarding and but trust me this stuff goes on in this tank but obviously with these updates you don't see but you know I'm always noticing new things and new, new bits of um, stuff, growth and crabs and sponges and all, all sorts this live rock is, is fantastic it's all, always it's always changing and evolving this is so young this reef but I know that over the months to come I've got ex, you know uh, experience of, of different things to come I know because it just changes all the time people say oh is it mature yet I mean, no way I mean some people say reef tanks are mature after a year the hell they're not they, they just keep evolving and changing I know people that have got um, you know, reports of, of um, their, their tanks after five years they're still changing and, uh, and uh, evolving um, so yeah, that's what you get out of it. You get such a reward from it. And yeah, yeah, it is expensive, but in my eyes, well worth it. Um, so yeah, <coughs> that's it. The reef for two fifty. Eleven weeks in. Um, I don't think I've got anything else to uh, to say. There's always something when I stop the video. I think oh, I should have mentioned that. Uh, obviously, any co comments you've got, any questions, put them in the box below. Um, please subscribe. Um, it's getting quite popular in our channel, which I'm really surprised by. Only, I think it's 450 or 470 odd subscribers. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm hoping it, what I'm doing is uh, of use to you and helps you out. Um, so yeah, um, hit the like, subscribe, and uh, hopefully I'll do ne another video next week um, for sort of 12 weeks. I might leave it till the three month mark we'll see see what changes and stuff so thanks for watching and see you next time cheers folks bye